Good afternoon. My name is Mike Savannah. I work with Environmental Health Vector Control from Wallace County for about 24 years now. Got tons of experience. My co worker, Dr. Orr, back there. He has tons of experience also. He's my other co worker that has the vector control. Can you hear me now? All right. This is a good part. I'm excited to be here to talk about the Vector Control Program. I'm here to uh, promote uh, the Vector Control Program. What we do, uh, we take requests for rodents, bed bugs, and different types of other pests, such as roaches. Um, I just want to get into some of the things that we want to cover. Dealing with rodents, of course, mice can make you sick. They can um, contaminate your food. And when you clean it up, you want to make sure that you're not touching the rodent droppings. And also, the rodent droppings can form a dust when you clean it up. Make sure you wear a mask. Also, these are three things that rodents need to, um, to forage, shelter, food, and water. And also, if you have a male and a female um, mouse, two mice, in a home, pretty much in three months that you can have an infestation if you don't take care of it. You can't ignore it. These are some of the signs that you got mice, uh, rats, droppings are a little bit bigger than a mouse drop. You can see four here, those are red burrows. The other picture is the side of a barn, um, shed. If you walk around, um, if you, find, if you have a home, a shed, or anything like that with holes in the bottom, at the, at the lower part of the ground, nine times out of ten, you got a mouse or a rat going and you're trying to get whatever you got inside your shed, storage area. Again, you want to look outside the apartment building. You want to make sure that you don't see any, if you notice any rat burrows around there, you want to let your maintenance and your management know. Also, sometimes to help eliminate the food source you want to pick up, if you got a pet, you want to make sure you pick up behind your dog. You got dirty dishes in your sink. You won't, don't want to leave those overnight. Also, if you have these, uh, food products, if you buy bulk food, cereal, things of that nature, you want to store it in a plastic container. If you have any water leaks, you want to let your maintenance know so they can come and fix the problem. Also, you want to keep your toilet closed. You want to eliminate the water source as much as possible. Also, you want to keep your kitchen covered neatly. Well, try to keep it neatly <laughs> as you can. And also, um, if you spill sugar, any type of sweet things of that nature in your cat, you want to clean it up. They can track roaches, ants that nature. Also mice. Also you want to take a look around your apartment unit if you have any gaps around the plumbing, the bottom of your door well, you can add a door sweeper, you can call maintenance, they can pretty much uh, provide you that um, door sweeper. And also I guess you can look around your apartment if you notice any wallpaper, any sockets, um, loose, outlet loose, you want to call maintenance and make sure you report that. Some homeowners like to get rid of mice by using snap traps. I pretty much like to use bait. Um, be careful when you use snap traps, follow the direction. And also going back, when you clean it, when you notice them, um, mice droppings or rodent dropping, you want to make sure you wear gloves, um, also, you want to protect yourself with wearing a mask. Make sure you wash your hands once you finish. All right, now we're going to talk about bed bugs. Raise your hand if anybody know anyone that experienced bed bugs. Too much. They're not known. That's the good part. They're not known to carry disease. They're not dangerous. They pretty much, once they bite, they might cause allergic reaction. Everybody have a different reaction 
uh, to bed bike. And also, you can, if you notice um, spots around your mattress, you could have bed bugs. Um, air casing. Looking in the corner of your um, bed, you might see some live bed bugs between the cracks and crevices. Again, back again, if you have um, wall sockets, they like to hang around the wall socket. Also, inspect your furniture if you ever have a um, problem with bed bugs. Um, look between the cushions. Also, report, um, report your problem to the management and make sure they um, address the situation as soon as possible. If you know there's one bed bug, go ahead and squash it. If you know two bed bugs, squash both of them and then call me. Again, I'm going to recap. Our vector voter control office, we come out, we respond to uh, customers' concerns, we conduct inspections, we provide, provide education information. We also base storm drains on certain occasions uh, when it comes to storm drains. We do base county um, sewer lines because we do have rats come up through the county sewer uh, system sometimes. On certain cases, we do that. And also, we work with different departments around the county to deal with voting issues. Hello, everyone. My name is Inspector Nolan, and I'm here from your favorite department, which is code enforcement. Our number one priority is safe structures and safe occupancies. Uh, code enforcement inspectors ensure uniform and um, adequate um, enforcement of maintenance standards. We also verify the safe and efficient occupancy and use of properties. We're responsible for the Virginia Maintenance Code, the Virginia Uniform Statewide Building Code, Condition of Private Property Ordinance, the Noise Ordinance, uh, as well as the Sidewalk Snow Removal Ordinance, Blight Ordinance, and building standards. We have brochures out in the uh, lobby at our table. I want to kind of go over a quick observation of the things that we hear and get complaints for the most. Uh, things we address, we address things such as structures that are vacant and open to trespassing. Uh, missing gutters and downsprouts, missing building identification numbers, peeling paint at exterior or interior, and as well as illegal created bedrooms or apartments. Things we do not address um, is water or air quality issues, mold uh, inspection or testing, but we do have some brochures in the back as well at our table that gives uh, quite a bit of resourceful information as to who to contact for mode and who to reach out to. Uh, also, we don't deal with overcrowding. I think we touched on that as well uh, earlier. Um, parking issues we do not address. And the last thing that we don't address is live entertainment or dance hall permits. Uh, we get a lot of calls for people that are illegally um, having live performances at night. Uh, you can contact the county, but it just it won't be us. It will be at the main number, which is the 5000 703 um, As far as code enforcement, you can give us a call at the 3232 extension, or you can email us if you have questions or concerns within your neighborhood. Uh, you can submit a complaint, or you can just call and get general information from our admin staff. All right, can everybody hear me correct? Thank you so much for being here today in a nice Saturday. And uh, this is the last, the last time that we're gonna be here today. My name is Jorge Lora, I'm the Housing Outreach Program Coordinator for Arlington County. Uh, I'm, when I'm not, uh, this presentation is a little bit different than the one I have. Uh, in the one I have, I'm telling you, I'm not a lawyer. I am not a hygienist. I'm not a certified pest control guy. But what I am, I am a certified housing counselor. I still certify such as pro property maintenance, inspections. I still hold a real estate license since 1992. I have worked for a property management company for many years. On the other side of the fence, 
I was in charge of moving in, moving out, inspections for the tenants, rentals and sales. All right, so let's start here. Um, the whole scene between tenant, and you've been hearing this all morning, okay? So I'm just gonna reinforce. Everything starts when you sign the lease. When you sign the lease, which is a legal binding contract, everything starts. And then let me see if this, this work here. So then we have the housing laws, and then we have the property maintenance laws. The, um, the housing laws are enforced by the Virginia Residential Landlord and Tenant Act, most known as VRLTA. And if there is funding that comes from the federal government, then you, you know that you have the HAP contract, that's, that's when you go Section 8, and in the county we have the uh, housing grants. Let me see if this works. Okay, well, it doesn't work on the TV. And on the, on the property maintenance inspections, which is governed by the Virginia Uniform Statewide Building Code, the property maintenance code, that's, that's, that's the property maintenance code that is enforced in Arlington County by code enforcement. But they, they have other maintenance codes in Arlington County. We have the condition of private property. And we mention this because not every tenant lives in an apartment. There are tenants that live and rent houses. There are tenants that live in condominiums or even co-ops. I don't know how many of you are, but then that, that law will affect you. The zoning ordinance. People will say, what about the zoning ordinance? Well, tenants, sometimes you do business at the apartment that you don't supposed to do. Then zoning enforcement will, will affect you. Overcrowding is another one, all right? And noise ordinance. Now, that's not the noise that is done by your neighbor when they do a big party on Saturday. This is a different noise. It could be from a church doing the bells too early or for a construction, it's a different thing, all right? So let's keep going here because I only have a couple of minutes. So on the lease, the landlord have responsibilities, the tenant have responsibilities. And one of the main, I, you can say over here, all the landlord responsibilities, which is the main one? To keep the property where you live in good condition, in health, sanitary conditions, habitable conditions, all right? That's the main thing, other they collect the rent too. You know, that's the main thing for them. If they don't collect rent, then they don't have money to pay everybody. Now, and if you see here in the number on the same maintain, the premises in such a condition as to prevent the accumulation of moisture and the growth of mold, that's in the Virginia Residential Landlord and Tenant Act. All right, it's not, I'm not creating that. The same thing here, look at here. The last two, what it says in here. Basically, that is you don't tell the management that you have a pest right away and it become manifestation as a tenant you are responsible. All right? What about tenant responsibilities? One of the main tenant responsibilities is what? To pay the rent. That's the main thing. But they have other maintenance responsibilities. And this is under the Virginia Residential Landlord and Tenant Act that most typically is enforced in courts, right? We don't want that. As working for the county, we want us a different path. We're gonna talk about that on the question and answers, all right? But if you read here as a tenant, use reasonable efforts to maintain the property that you rent inside and any other part of the premise you occupy in a condition to prevent accumulation of moisture. You know, moisture is nothing but water on the air. And then you create bad humidity, or humidity that is in a range that will bring mold to the unit, all right? So I'll talk that more later on. The other one is here, tenants. Uh, here, you have to tell management that if you have any pets, any insects and pest problems, otherwise you will be paid for the added cost of pest treatment or extermination is you delay in reporting the, the pest. Uh, okay, what to do if something needs fixing? Okay, it's a landlord, who should make the repairs? 
in the question and answers later in the panel, we're gonna be answering those questions. But you wanna make sure that you're covering in the rent. You know, sometimes we get the complaints, usually when tenants are moving out, or when they have an, a big issue with someone in management. And something that I wanna tell you, you are a tenant, please work with management in the office. You know, because that manager is sandwiched between the tenant, between the uh, regional property manager, the big office of management, and then the landlord. Because most of the time, that property management company is not the landlord. Somebody owns that building. Even in the nonprofit, we have APA, we have AHC. They own the building, but they give the management to Paradigm, to Harbor Group. So what do they do? If you complain with that manager, what are they going to do? They might replace the manager, and then they got a new manager to come. It's like, a, oh, okay, well, and then the new manager too, it lasts for three months, six months, one year, and then we got the problem again. But work with the manager. All right, uh, make sure you are in the lease. You are on the lease. Sometimes we get calls, and people say, we ask the rash questions. And if they're not on the lease, sometimes they're renting the, uh, the living room. And then if they, if they complain, they're gonna have a big problem. So all of these we'll talk uh, later on. Uh, so let's go in here, steps. This is the main thing, steps to resolve maintenance issues. I've been doing this workshop for a long time. If, I, if everybody do this, nobody should have a problem in Arlington County, right? Report the maintenance problem to the management office, you see? Then call the emergency number. When you move, into any apartment, they tell you what is the procedure to do and in case there is any maintenance issues, how do you do it? Do some people listening or not? How you read the lease, what it says in the lease about that? It's important, right? Some management company, when I work uh, for the pro property management company, we usually do an addendum that we make the tenant sign that they have received all that information and also about the keys, so that's another important. Anyway, uh, then you might report the problem on the web page, uh, and it's best to put it in writing. You, you want to be on a certified letter and send that to the management. Or I have a little uh, thing that I'm going to show you later that I created that you can just write it down, take it to the management, and keep one copy. Then what happened after two weeks? Because that's the reasonable time, about 10 to 15 days if they don't fix something. Yeah, you, then you're gonna call us. Call the housing service first because we're gonna ask questions, but you can call directly call enforcement if you already know about the situation or you've been in the same problem before, right? And after 5 p.m. limit. And then when the problem has not resolved in 30 days, and you know what, I put this to the uh, tenant landlord commission because in the past, not now, 20 years ago, Tenants were complaining, oh, the, the, the inspectors are not doing anything. Well, I'm telling you, if you go to the Tenant Landlord Commission, they might summon the inspector to know what, what the problem is or what the problem is going on, all right? So uh, they meet in virtually, you're gonna know that. So what is an emergency? 24 hours to have no hot or cold water, heating, electricity, or other condition dangerous or life-threatening. That's something that, absolutely, if you have some, something dangerous like a, like a gas leak, you're gonna call 911 right away. And so we're gonna be talking about later on on the Q&I. Let me go to the last one. This, this is the uh, thing that I created. Not created, but got it from the web and, and recreated a little bit. That you can just put it on the check mark and then just take it. Uh, we will explain later on, maybe. And what to do is the repairs are not fixed. Still, we have some nice groups like Bugara that will be able to help you, all right? And if not, we have legal service of Northern Virginia. We have the, uh, the other folks of the uh, Legal Justice Center, too. And they can do the tenant assertion or the new one that is repair and deduct, okay? And these are the resources that we have, and thank you.
Thank you for that round of, of applause. Yes, we will open up uh, the floor to questions, but uh, first we'll, we're going to go through some frequently asked questions that I'm going to ask uh, the panelists. Uh, after that round of questions, we will open it up to the floor for questions. Thank you so much for those pre presentations. I, I did want to add, Jorge mentioned that um, if you need any assistance, I work with Bugatta Tennis Association. We've been in Arlington since 1992, working with renters here in Arlington County. Uh, so if you need any assistance with writing a letter to your landlord, which is the proper way to notify your landlord if you have any requests or any issues uh, during your tenancy, it, the proper way is to put it in writing. So we can help you with that. Uh, also, if anything is not being addressed and you need additional help, we can connect you with the resources with our friends over at Legal Services Northern Virginia and uh, the Legal Aid Justice Center. So with that, I have the questions for the panelists. We're going to start with the housing division. And thanks, Jorge, which you just presented, but I'm going to start with you. Uh, I'm going to pass you a microphone. There you go. Uh, you can either stand or sit and then pass the microphone around. Uh, your preference. First question is, when should a tenant request maintenance services from their property management and are there specific guidelines or procedures they should follow? All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I like to rumble a lot and give examples. That's what... That's why I wrote some answers, because I don't want to be too fast. So identify the problem and who is responsible. That's the main thing when you have a problem, right? It could be that it was somebody in your family that created the problem. If it's a leaking, it could be a different thing. We're gonna be I'm going to be talking about in the next. Uh, it, the problem could be minor or big, so you want to identify the problem. Then you want to get your proof together. What I mean by proof together? Pictures, you know, picture or maybe you have a witness, somebody in the family that can witness for you what the problem is. And if the manager is not responding to your request, then you can call probably an inspector. And believe me, some lawyers, they can summon the inspectors for if there is a case, all right? Uh, so you want to give a proper notice to your landlord what is a proper notice to your landlord? Like I said before, put it in writing. Or if it's in the, in the web page that they show you how to do it, keep a copy of everything. What time, when, who do you talk to? Ask what is your name every time you talk to somebody in the office. Everything will be needed if in case you have to go to court, right? Then allow a reasonable, uh, reasonable chance for your landlord to repair. What is reasonable time? Two weeks for something that is not, uh, uh, that can be some dangerous problem. That's, that's, that's enough time. And if the repair is not done, then you can call the county, right? And then you can take the court, the, the case to court if it's necessary. That's the procedure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jorge. The next question is going to be for, for our friend here for, uh, from Environmental Health. If you could pass the microphone to him, Jorge. Thank you so much. So, uh, you talked in your presentation about pests. And so, several common pests are found in apartments, such as bed bugs, roaches, and rodents. And I have three questions. How can tenants effectively report and address these issues? What steps should tenants take to prepare for pest control treatments? And lastly, are there any precautions they need to be aware of to ensure their safety? Okay, usually uh, pest control companies come out once a month in the apartment complex. They have a procedure to let the tenant know um, what they how to prepare for their treatment, such as roaches. Sometimes if they have an infestation, they might ask the homeowner to empty their uh, kitchen cabinets, their closets, things of that nature. It all depends on how cluttered it is. Um, Usually, homeowners who have problems with asthma, things of that nature, 
might use a different treatment. All depends on what type of pest they use. They ask the homeowner might want to be out the house for a certain amount of time, um, at least a minimum of four to six hours. All depends on what pest they're treating. Thank you. Um, any precautions that people should keep in mind uh, to stay safe while the apartments are being treated? Yes, well, um, like I said, if they have any um, health issue, breathing, oxygen, things of that nature, um, want to make sure you let your landlord know that, so they can let the pest provider know how to treat. Because they got... Um, they got different ways to treat that you can be on set for roaches, for example. You can be at home, they can treat the home while you're there for roaches, just bait only. Uh, so they have different ways to treat. And so, also, they they all always supposed to leave a label of whatever they use inside the home um, on the uh, premise. That's right, because we do hear that often a lot. Uh, we get calls from renters saying, hey, look, I received a letter that my apartment is going to be um, treated for extermination of roaches, per se, and the landlord is asking me to empty the cabinet. So and usually those questions come with, uh, from people with mobility problems or the elderly. And so it's important that you communicate that to management. Let them know I have uh, mobility issues or I cannot uh, reach the, the cabinets. And so can you do an alternate type of uh, treatment to, to the um, Apartment and so often it's when they use the gel dabs with the, right. with the baits. Yeah, right. instead of spraying So yeah, that's very important to communicate that to management Thank you, Thank you so much uh, The next question is gonna be for Jorge in housing okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, This has to do with differentiating between minor maintenance issues so how can tenants differentiate between the minor maintenance issues they can address themselves and those that require the intervention of property management. So what is it that the tenant can do themselves versus when is it that main, the property management has to provide that? Good question, very good question. All right, like I said before, now I'm gonna explain. Earlier I said, identify the problem. That's the very thing you have to do. Who's responsible for it? So let me give you some examples of minor repairs. And I usually say, by the way, tenants don't do any repairs. But let me tell you, some examples of minor repairs include plunge a toilet. If the toilet is clogged and it's a weekend, are you going to call the manager right away? Or maybe you can have one of those plungers that you just plunge it and then it works. All right. um, hair clock sink drain maintenance that's another one you know that you can buy a little thing at home depot for two dollars that you just put it inside you got little uh like feathers and then you just pull all that hair the same same from the bathtub and you will see all the hair that comes up all right working in property management i'm telling you i used to have a tenant that complains every month about clogged toilet until i tell him i'm gonna tell the plumber to take the toilet out Put it upside down, take the picture, and yes, it was toys from the kids, you know. So, yeah, um, clean mildew. You know, no mold. I'm not talking about mold. I'm talking about mildew. The one that usually grows around the bathtub or the shower. You know why it grows? Because when, when you take a shower, that little drop of water creates the moisture necessary for mildew to start growing. All right, so you can do something when you, after you take a shower, all right, what you do, you imply it. Some people put it inside a bucket, uh, 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 put a bag on top, so collect the water or different ways, all right. Uh, replacing light bulbs. Yeah, most of the time I tell manager, hey, listen, if it's like a, one of those big, uh, you throw uh, fluorescent lights, tenants are not going to be able to do, but regular light bulbs, who's responsible for it? Okay, so that comes back to the question, who's responsible for it? A smoke detector batteries. Sometimes you have to read the lease. In the lease, it says who is responsible. If you rent a house, you rent a townhouse, most of the time you're going to be responsible for doing that, for cleaning the gutters, for cutting the grass, for many things, all right? Uh, 
resetting a tripping, a, a tripping breaker. You know, sometimes you are watching TV, suddenly it's a thunderstorm, the electricity is gone. Are you gonna run and call maintenance? Or you should know about where to be shut off for electricity is, for gas and for water. All right, you should know that. And probably the management, they told you when you are moving in where the problem is, how to do it, right? Uh, not notify your landlord right away of any necessary repairs or updates and refrain from making drastic modifications. I see managers, they do allow tenants to paint their apartment, but you have to notify them and put it in writing. The only catch is that you have to turn the apartment when you move out the same way it was before, all right? Um, a landlord's insurance policy will not cover any injuries or property damage that a tenant causes while making repairs. So any mistakes could be very expensive. So you should have what is called renter's insurance. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Don't go away. <laughs> I have uh, another question for you. All right. You touched uh, on, you know, um, moisture that leads to mildew, but you know, I also want to talk a little bit about mold. Okay. And for that, I have two questions that are related. Here. What are the responsibilities of property management in addressing mold-related issues? And the follow-up question to that is, how can tenants ensure that mold problems are resolved effectively and promptly? All right, another good question. Um, I can give you a short answer for that, but let me explain just a little bit more. The Virginia Residential Landlord and the Tenant Net, what I told you before, BRLT, outlines the mold remedy for landlord and tenants at the beginning of the lease, during the lease, and maybe when you are moving out too. What is the situation with, with the mold remediation? According with the VRLTA, the landlord is responsible for mold remediation unless the tenant fails to report the issue and it becomes a violation of the tenant responsibility to maintain the premises. In such cases, the landlord may charge the tenant for the mold remediation. You know, like I said before, get rented insurance that covers leaks or flooding. Because otherwise, if the uh, renter's insurance doesn't cover your, your sinks, you will have to throw away and nobody will pay you for it. Now, and the second question, um, a mold problem is an excess of moisture problem. Excess moisture grants for leaks or condensation. Do you see how it's outside today? It's not too hot. But if you've been walking, you know that you're sweating. You know, that creates moisture inside you, and then you're sweating. Imagine the same thing inside your apartment. The walls also are sweating, but they cannot take a shower. All right? The same thing with the floor or the carpet. All right? And they cannot take a shower. So that creates the problem for moisture that creates condensation. Condensation is the tenant responsibility. Why? Because you control inside the air conditioning or the heating. So you want to maintain that right temperature inside. What I did when I used to do inspections uh, for the county, I walk into and do inspection into this apartment and it was so hot inside. Well, the tenant said that he was saving money. He put the air conditioning off in the morning and he put it on when he came back after 5 p.m. The walls were like probably sweating and all water was all over. And what's that gonna bring? Mold, right? Um, so condensation is poorly understood by both parties and it's very common. How do you prevent condensation? Uh, keep relative humidity below. Some people say between 30, 60. Some people, for me, it's 40, 50. That's it, between 40 and 50%. You control the humidity uh, in, the, in, the, in the kitchen, I don't say don't cook too much and don't take too many showers. Get enough, but if you don't have an exhaust fan, open the window. If you have an exhaust fan, put it on after you take the shower. All right, you, so you take that moisture out of the air. See, people don't realize that we are like a fish. Fish are inside water. We are inside air, right? All right, so check that exhaust fan are actually moving. Uh, make sure that using indoor gates exchange daily. 
you know that every every uh, house they supposed to change the air seven times a day. I believe many people are not know that. That's indoor air quality, by the way. Uh, all so right. That, so uh, that, that's done. And you say uh, you can buy a humidity, what is called uh, gauge, a thermometer, a hygrometer. It costs only $25. You got two points here that you can check if your walls are creating humidity or moisture. Right? That's good. So, proper, don't, don't leave yet. I, got, I have more questions for you sure. before we move on to our friend of, uh, from uh, uh, code enforcement. So, proper ventilation is very important. That includes yes, uh, controlling the temperature inside your apartment and uh, allowing the apartment to breathe as well, right? With the windows open to allow air to circulate. So, that's very important. Now, uh, we talked about that. I'm sorry. I'm not sure the interpreter could hear that, but I'm going to translate it. So he's asking the question, what do you then do in the winter when it's cold out? And, you know, if you open the window, all that cold air is going to come in. So how do you properly ventilate your apartment then? Well, buy a humidifier. It's a good investment. You know, it's like I said to people, if you live in a house and then you, you know that you create because there is several members of the family and they take a shower, or they cook, they, and, and there are more people, somebody coming from... Uh, Peru, Bolivia to visit you, and then there is more people that are supposed to be inside the park. That create all that moisture. So maybe it's about time for you to buy a humidifier, a dehumidifier. You know, take all that moisture from the air, and it's a good investment. I'm telling you. Other than open the window in the, in the winter time, I know you can catch a cold. So I'm not saying that. Now, make sure you tell the manager when you close the window, and then you can see air infiltrating. Code enforcement can enforce that, right? It, it, why? Have you ever seen this little condensation on the window, especially in winter time? Inside is very hot. Outside is cold, and the air drop, and you see little drops of water inside. That's the beginning of mold problems. You want to clean it before it becomes cold. Thank you, Jorge. So the next question I have for you is. What actions can tenants take if their landlord is, or property management is unresponsive to their maintenance requests, possibly living in substandard living conditions? Are there any legal avenues they can pursue? presentation you know identify the problem see who's responsible and then send the problem to the manager get the proof pictures witnesses if you, they don't they, they don't want to do anything call enforcement all right and if it still doesn't work who you can call Chespirito no you can call uh, Bugara oh, or you can call also here a legal aid a justice center if you qualify too because if you make more than 80% of the area median income, you are out of luck, isn't it? Yeah, but, but still, you can go to the Bar Association. Do you know the Bar Association have pro bono lawyers? I've been in court in, co in more cases when I, when I was working in property management, and a good lawyer, I'm telling you, it, it will beat the management. And then you can get three times the security deposit plus pain and suffering. And that with the pro bono, <laughs> you know how it works, you know. So, um, as explained earlier, legal services or any of these lawyers can do a tenant search. And I'm telling you, you can do it. It's not difficult, but it is. <laughs> it is. You don't know what you're doing. I mean, you say, well, I'm going to compete with this property management company, and I'm going to go and take them to court. Because Hector sent me the information on how to do the tenant assertion, and then I know how to download that, and I take them then to court. Oh, yeah, good luck. They're going to move it to the general district court where you have to have a lawyer, and you have to respond. That's how property management, they have all the experience. Or you can do the other one, which is remedy by repair. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much, Jorge. If anyone needs any additional information, we're going to open up a Q&A after our... Um
code enforcement. So thank you, Jorge. Thank you so much. So real quick, we're going to, vamos a llegar a, la, a las preguntas en unos momentos, okay? Gracias. So uh, for code enforcement, um, I have a few questions for you, if you could, uh, this, this uh, the microphone, sorry. Oh, Jorge Flores will be joining us for the uh, Q&A section for code enforcement. So, I know the Jorge. <laughs> Jorge is our popular tonight, uh, today, <laughs> today, this Saturday. So, um, if you could briefly tell us a little bit about what are some signs that indicate it's time to contact the county's code enforcement office or department regarding housing violations or unsafe living conditions. Okay, so there's two things. Unsafe is a different from regular property maintenance. When they call us for unsafe, that, that means that we need to act quick. And sometimes we have to uh, deplete or make move out the property owner from the property. And that's given uh, 24 hours, right? 24 hours for unsafe. Now, if there's a regular property maintenance, uh, we usually give them 30 days to the property owner to, to repair and do the fixing or the replacement of any system. So, but then again, they have 14 days to appeal. That if, they, if the property owner appeals our violation notice, the replacement of the repairs of the problem might take longer, months. So now are they working towards compliance? They might, but then again, the, the, the tenant has the right to go to, a, to a, an attorney, a lawyer, and see what remediation could get, right? They could move into a different unit, a different property and so on. So thank you for telling us. You actually covered a little bit of what I wanted to ask you next, mm -hmm. which is the process of code enforcement, what a tenant could expect from, from code enforcement um, so when they file a complaint uh, and what possible outcomes could come out of it. Uh, you know, in, any any given problem within the unit of the, of the house, because most people uh, in nowadays rent an entire house, so they uh, do the complaint to us, we do the investigation, we send the violation notice, giving them 30 days to comply. If there's no signs of compliance within those 30 days, then we might give them another couple of weeks. If there's no compliance, then the next step is to take them to court. Now, once the case gets to, to the judge docket, that's it. There's nothing else we could do. That's between the property owner and the job. Well, thank you so much, Jorge. Mm -hmm. Now we will open up the floor for Q&A, for questions from the audience. So, ahora vamos a abrir el espacio para preguntas de la uh, audiencia. Eh, si por favor levantan la mano, eh, vamos a tratar de llevar cuenta a ver quiénes, eh, quiénes siguen y les vamos a traer el micrófono o a donde esté este para que haga su pregunta. So you, so you, can, you can ask any. Okay? Yeah, just, if you guys could stay here with the okay. mic. Sí, tengo una pregunta, no sé, para, creo que es para el señor de, de aquel lado. Este, yo vivo en un complejo en Columbia Pie. Um, no habían puesto el aire acondicionado hace como tres semanas. Eh, bueno, fui a la oficina, les dije, entonces me dijeron, bueno, dentro de cuatro días lo ponemos. Eh, lo curioso es que normalmente antes de poner el aire acondicionado se supone que tienen que llegar a limpiar los filtros. Pusieron el aire acondicionado y estos son los momentos que no han llegado a limpiar ni siquiera los filtros. Yo padezco mucho de alergias y tengo problemas un poquito con el asma. Eh, fui a la oficina de nuevo y les dije, bueno, ¿qué pasa? Que no han llegado a limpiar los filtros. Eh, pronto, pronto vamos a ir. Y así la han llevado y no han llegado. No sé okay. qué puedo hacer. 
Okay, so that 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 question belongs to to us, code enforcement. So under the okay, <laughs> I know we have interpretation, but that's going on on the uh, on, on the other. Yeah. So, all right. So I'm going to summarize it. So she says that um, where she lives. Um, it was time to turn on the air conditioner and she requested that from management, but she says that at that time, there should be a filter change uh, when, when turning on the ACs. And so that didn't happen. So she was asking that question to, uh, well, code enforcement will take an answer to that. Right, okay. So here's the following. Uh, ben, you can translate to the lady. So um, under the, 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 the building codes, there are specific dates. The AC or the air conditioning time has to start on May 14, not before. It runs all the way to October 30th, right? So October 1st. And then, you know, management company are given two weeks to do the replacement of the filters, to clean and make sure that the boilers are up to working for the entire uh, cooling season. Right, right. But then again, in, in your in your uh, listing, they tell you exactly when they're gonna be replacing and how many times a year. You have to read your. Uh, Good, so now you know. You identify the problem, right? You have the proof. What are you gonna do? Call, call the foreman, put it, put it, put it in writing. And, and then this guy will go over there and check the filter, all right? And if you live in one of our committed affordable units, give us a call and we're gonna put you in touch with the inspector. The committed affordable units, uh, they work also with separate inspections, okay? We can work too on that. That's why we ask you sometimes to call the, uh, the Office of the Housing Information Services because we'll find out. Maybe you have an agent, maybe where you are with DHS, maybe you are so, all right? Jorge, can you keep the microphone? Uh, the next question is related to something you said in your presentation about mildew. So I'm gonna pass the microphone here to you. Hi, um, you had mentioned um, about landlord, like when to call the landlord or when not to. So you had mentioned you know, I hear you, well. you had mentioned if the, um, you said if you're, if like the toilet is clogged, just use the plunger. If the, um, if, if the, well, the fire detector isn't working, just replace the battery. Um, I missed what you said about the mildew. There was a child screaming back here. So can you repeat the part about the mildew? Oh yeah, the mildew. Yeah, yeah, well, like the what, mildew, what do, I, 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 I had a big problem at that at my house because I had to replace all of that all the time. So I found it a real nice way. Uh, because I work for the county, I cannot tell you to use chemicals. But there are different products natural right now that in the morning, when you after you take a shower and you see at least just one speck of black in there growing, spray it. In the afternoon, when you come back, rinse it and keep it clean because it started like uh, mildew is part of a uh, mold in some way it is start in like a little dot and then it multiply and then if you take it you can jump to the walls and then that's where the whole process start right so you can put it and that everything is because of the, the the head shower you know if you don't have a head shower that is detachable then what you can do is make sure the water drains from the pipe that goes from the diverter to the shower. Make sure all that water is gone because that little dot uh, water that drops, that's what creates the problem with mildew. What she said, you said to spray it in the morning, what do you spray it with? Uh, like a 
like I said, because I work for the county, I cannot tell you there are good products. You can go into uh, one of the biggest stores, you know, um, and, and then they they can tell you. And now, um, um, because I, I cannot tell you to use bleach. Some people they tell you mix it, mix it with that, and that will kill the moldy way. But I can because I work for the county. So thank you, thank you so much. We have another question over there. I'm gonna uh, walk over with the microphone. Even though you are front, but. <laughs> yeah, but. So this is more for pest control. Um, I know you focus on rats and cockroaches, but what about if you have infestations of say wasps or birds that burrow into uh, the, the building, which I guess also lead to building enforcement enforcement as well. Does the county deal with that issue as well? Does wasps does pose uh, immediate harm to, say, those are prone to allergies? Uh, I haven't got a call for a bird or a uh, wasp at an apartment um, unit, but I would say if, if your management doesn't address the situation, do call us. And, 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 and go from there. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have another uh, question. Wasps, wasps and birds. Wasps, wasps, bees. Oh, and birds. Well, well, thank you for that. We have another question here. Um, what can you do when, uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to ask you this, basically when your property is doing illegal things to the tenant. Okay, like, okay, like. I, I, when, when they move in, this tenant was so truly good that he write every little detail, and yet. And when he was moving out, I charged him ninety dollars for replacing a, a, a light bulb that he didn't do it and throw away a chair. Right? Do I have the right to do that as a property management company? Yes, because I hire a uh, cleaning company to do that and an electrician to, to replace that because I want to receive and everything. He was so truly good in print. But uh, sure. Um, we, we do help at legal services somewhat with security deposits. Uh, it really depends. I'm not sure if it's I understand. A, it's a little bit more intense than that. Like, I'm really thinking about suing them. When I, it's not just a security deposit. When I say no contact, like, that's, that's the example. I'm talking to you right now. No contact meaning no what? No contact. No, no, I have no proof of move out. I couldn't, if you was to come to me and say, show me your proof of move out, I couldn't show you nothing. I couldn't show you a slip from them stating that the security deposit, if they, if I owe them anything, if they owe me anything, like when I say move out, I mean like, you know, you're supposed to, that's why I was like the property management. You go in, you check the property, you're like, oh, okay, it's a scratch on the wall, it's, breaking the drywall, we got charge her for that, the carpet, this. I couldn't give you any of that, nothing. I, even if you called the company, they couldn't give it to you. And you're saying you didn't get back any of your security deposit? Yeah, no, they tried to say that I, they took out money from the security deposit and the rest of the money, they're going to keep it. Yeah, they have to document what they're deducting and why from yeah. your security deposit. I, I couldn't give you none of that. I even went to, they tried to do an eviction process on me, and the judge threw it out. She was just like, she doesn't owe you guys no money. They wanted their keys back, but I wanted my move out information. Uh, it sounds like a particular case. You could get in touch with us separately. I have our number out there or legal referral. Okay. All right. It looks like you have the resources already, so I would highly encourage you to uh, talk to Ben and Legal Services, Northern Virginia. 
do we have any other questions? We have a few more minutes before ending time. So. Yo insisto en que toda esta conversación que estamos teniendo no estamos dándole mucha prioridad a las enfermedades que pueden traer los complaints en el apartamento. La señora no tiene aire acondicionado, ella sufre del asma, el mo, el señor dice que hay que abrir la ventana en el invierno. Cuando yo sé que el mo lo podemos combatir cerrando la ventana y poniéndole más gi al, al apartamento. El gi va a combatir el agua que se está acumulando en el vapor. El vapor es agua. Y el gi, como debe de estar, tiene que combatir esa agua. No abriendo la ventana en el invierno para los niños. Yo me preocupo más por los niños. Y todos sabemos que los managers tratan de, de evitar invertir en los apartamentos. No quieren gastar, no quieren, no quieren a, a, a cumplir con las normas del condado, con las normas de, de, del gobierno. Evitan hasta donde sea posible. Y hay mucha gente humilde que no puede ir donde los managers porque no saben inglés, porque son humildes, porque no vienen de ciudades que ellos hacen con play. Entonces, por eso es que debemos de forzar, incluir, inclusive, cuando entramos a un apartamento, entramos con el manager y una lista hacemos frente al manager. Para esa lista que, como encontramos el apartamento, vamos a hacer otra lista cuando salimos del apartamento. Porque ellos tienen que pagar. Uh, if, go ahead, Jorge. If, if I might say something. Uh, you're trying. Are you able to translate? So, <laughs> if, if, if I may something, the gentleman is right. Okay? You, you all people have all the right to complain about the substandards of living on your space. You have that right. Because you pay in taxes, you live in a good county, low crime. But then again, if there is something that you need to complain, call us. We will take care of it. Okay? So that's what we're here for. Any agencies in the county will help you. We need you to be safe to live in, in, in a safe place. That's right. So uh, to add on to that, what the gentleman was saying here is that you have rights, all right? The second you sign that lease, you have rights. Just like you have your uh, rights and responsibilities, that landlord also have their own responsibility, rights and responsibilities, which is to make sure that your housing, where you're living, is a safe and healthy place. So it is very important. And what, another thing he mentioned is that a lot of people are afraid of communicating with management because they're afraid of retaliation. Do not be because you do have rights. You heard about your, your rights from the Legal Services Northern Virginia presentation earlier today. You heard it from Jorge Laura who does great presentations on your rights and how to understand your lease. We actually partner with him. He comes and does presentations for us as well. So I, I highly encourage that you uh, stay educated on your rights and be an advocate for yourself, okay? Do not be afraid to reach out. You can reach out to Bugatta. We can give you access, resources, where to go. You can reach out to the county directly, to the housing division or code enforcement or the environmental department. Uh, Jorge has something else to add? That's it. Lo voy a decir en español porque el señor lo dijo en español, okay? Es la parte de abrir las ventanas en invierno. Lo que dije yo es abrir las ventanas cuando sea posible pero en el invierno, y le dije que lo mejor es comprar un deshumedizador para su apartamento, ¿ok? El deshumedizador quita toda esa humedad y le permite ver cuánta humedad y mantenerla, si no, crea, no crece ese problema de, de moho en, encima de los apartamentos. Jamás le voy a decir a alguien de que abra la ventana cuando yo sé que le puede dar una neumonía. Y, y además, el, el otro, disculpe un momentito, cuando el tenan, yo he trabajado y sigo trabajando todavía para Property Management Company, cuando el inquilino va a rentar, ahora, yo he trabajado en casas, single family, pero no apartamentos,
cuando el inquilino firma, ellos le dan la lista. Y lo primero que yo les digo cuando doy charlas, han leído su contrato de renta. Ahí está todo lo que ellos, sus derechos y todo lo que tienen que hacer. Gracias, Jorge. Creo que podemos una preguntita más. Eh, Jorge, ¿puedes traducir real quick? ¿Puedes traducir real quick? Say, say it in English? Yes, what I, what I was trying to clarify is the gentleman say, well, this guy is saying that to open the window uh, uh, after you take a shower on a winter time. So I want to make sure that he understood that what I said was the best thing is to buy a dehumidifier, to take out that humidity. There are, there are uh, rental houses, I, and, I, and I'm also a new landlord here in Arlington, and one of my rentals doesn't have an exhaust. You know, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to put an exhaust for the bathroom, you know, to take away. So that's what I clarify. And also I clarify that every time the tenant goes and to rent an apartment, they get all the lists of things that they are responsible for, where to complain. And do they have read the lease? That's the main thing for a tenant, to know and read the lease. Thank you for that. Uh, I do want to say one thing. I think we have someone wanting to ask a question, so we're going to give them the time for that real quick. He did mention to understand your lease. I know that has a very complicated language in there. So if you need assistance with that, we can help you a little bit with that. And if there's any additional help you need, there's also legal services in Northern Virginia that can help you with that. So if you need that resource, reach out to us and we'll connect you with them. Now we do have uh, one last question, all right? Antes, me acuerdo que antes del, del COVID eh, llegaba el condado y lo que la señora dice es muy cierto. Antes sacaban los aires y los cambiaban. Ahora después del COVID nos hemos, los han vuelto un poco flojos. Perdonen la, la, la mala la palabra. Se han vuelto flojos y me recuerdo muy bien que en mi apartamento llegaba una persona cada año, no sé si cada año, no sé cuánto tiempo, a chequear todo lo malo. Y así como la oficina llegaba a, re, a acomodar todo. Y señor, gracias por las palabras. Queremos gente más como usted en la comunidad para que defienda. ¿Cómo se llama el señor? William, señor William, muchas gracias. Porque la verdad que a veces en la comunidad hay muchas personas hispanas que no saben inglés. Y vemos personas que a puras penas hablan el español que vienen de los países apenas. Y a veces hay personas que tienen miedo por ser inmigrantes y no tienen papeles y no se defienden en eso. Pero la renta estamos pagando cada mes. Gracias, señor. Yeah, so we're going to start wrapping up. So I'm going to translate real quick what she just said. She said that in her apartment complex, um, they're failing to uh, do the filter replacement of the AC systems. Uh, and this started like around COVID time and it's, it's COVID is... Pretty much all, all, everything is back to sort of, again, how things were uh, in the apartments, but they haven't yet changed their air filters. Uh, so they're, um, they're not doing that. And then she also thanked uh, Mr. Williams for what he said. He, she said that we need more people like him uh, standing up and advocating in the community. And um, what was the last thing? There was one more thing about just making sure, ensuring that you, uh, you know your rights and speak up for yourself. And don't be, don't be afraid of... Uh, retaliation or intimidation. So that pretty much uh, sums it up. I know I'm going to pass it back to uh, Jennifer. So thank you so much for everybody for being here and spending this beautiful Saturday with us. And with that, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you so much to our panelists. Great information. And thank you for, can you hear me? Thank you for sticking in. This is a beautiful day and we appreciate your spending your Saturday with us. And we have um, I, one thing I wanted to say, if you have registered, we're gonna, we can send this presentation to you. So we, if we have your email, we can send it to you. There's also, of course, lots of materials out there. And the presentation will also be posted on our website. So all of the information that you got today, you can find it on our website, or again, we'll send it to you.